Hi, welcome to another episode of Data Pancakes. Today I'm really excited because we will uh, look at data quality within Microsoft Perview as well as Microsoft Fabric and the combination of those two. So Surat and I we will walk you through. Um, we will show you how to create a data product, so the data product data within Microsoft Fabric and what is needed in terms of the configuration, so to allow Microsoft Perview to scan Microsoft Fabric. And next, I'm going to show you how that really works it in Microsoft Perview itself. So we will create a new data domain, a business domain, I must say, a new data product, and then we will in we will link it to a data set, and that data set then will reside in Microsoft Fabric. And then on top of that, we will implement data quality rules, we will set an alert, and we will do the assignment. So lots of things we, uh, we are planning to cover today. But before we show you what we would like to demonstrate, let me bring you back to a previous episode in which we discussed those two different business domains. And for that, let me put a slide up on the screen. And here you see what we have discussed and also created so far. So two domains, so the package handling management domain with its source system, as well a workspace within fabric and data sets. And for today, we are going to create that other domain, so the air flight operations management. We already have that created within Microsoft fabric so Sarat will show you the workspace with the actual data which will be used as input for the data product creation but in Perview we will create the business domain so the air flight operations management domain and then next we will start creating a data product so hope this helps and gives a bit of context so let me bring it over to you Sarat and uh, please demonstrate Microsoft fabric so what is needed in terms of um, scanning uh, data, so doing data quality with Microsoft Fabric. So let's head over to you uh, then. Thank you, Bithain. So we are now inside the Fabric portal. As Bithain mentioned, we're going to find out how can you set up the scanning from Microsoft Purview into Microsoft Fabric. There are a few admin settings which you need to tweak so that your identity, which is used by Microsoft Purview, can come in and scan the data which is sitting inside Microsoft Fabric. So if I go into my admin portal, the first thing I need to do is search for metadata. And as you can see, I get some Fabric API settings which need to be enabled. The first setting is service principles. So service principles can use Fabric APIs. If you look into this, you can either turn it on for the entire organization or we would recommend that you do it for a specific security group. So what you need to do is the identity which you're using to scan uh, fabric in this sense should be added to a particular security group. And that security group needs to be enabled to start using the fabric APIs. That is something which we would recommend rather than giving the whole organization rights to scan the fabric APIs. The next setting which you need to do is on the service principles. So service principles can access read only admin APIs. The same process, you have to enable this on the security group where, for example, your identity, which is used to scan your Microsoft Fabric instance is added. That's the second setting which you need to alter. The third <clears throat> setting which you need to alter is this one. So the admin API responses need to be enhanced with detailed metadata. Similar exercise, you need to add the security group where basically the uh, identity which is used to scan Microsoft Fabric is added. And last but not the least, it's basically enhancing your admin API responses with DAX and mashup expression. So these need to be enabled for your Microsoft Purview instance to start scanning Microsoft Fabric. So once you're done with that, the next thing is that we get into my workspace. So as we had seen in the first uh, slide, we could see that there were two different domains. In our scenario, we're looking at ALM check-ins team one. So if we go into this, there's a change which you might have observed. That's basically task flows. So during Microsoft build, which happened last week, we announced a public preview of what we call as a task flow. And a task flow is nothing but a project template. So if you have a scenario where I need to, for example, add a task, I could say that I want to have a medallion architecture implemented. The whole idea is that you could select 
a task flow where you have a medallion architecture template and fabric automatically deploys this for you we will discuss this in detail in a later demo but for now it's just fyi so that you can start moving if you're not interested in task flows of course you can uh kind of switch it off like so basically you can actually roll it up so that it's not visible inside your ui now if i get into my data products i could see that right now i have for example my uh, check-in info which is basically the lake house which we had earlier but uh, we also have a new uh, lake house which we call as flight stats so if i go into my flight stats <clears throat> lake house what i can see is basically i have a table called flight stats inside flight stats i have my flight id i have an arrival time when the flight had arrived what's the departure time for that flight the number of passengers on the flight and i have a delay flag which computes whether the flight was delayed or not in this particular scenario pete hein is going to explain on how a business user is able to define a data quality rule on top of this flight stats information so with that i would like to pass it back to pete hein. now let's head over to the purview part and start um, implementing configuring data quality within there so we are now in the new purview portal and here we can see all the options, all the tabs. So I'm going to choose the data catalog. And in here on the left, data management and business domain. So the first thing we need to do is to establish a new business domain. So I'm going to click this button here, hit new business domain. I'm going to provide a name. So let me copy paste that as well. Description. So from here. Next, we need to select the type. So I'm going to say, well, this is a line of business. We are not going to add this to apparent. So now we have the flight operations management. And on the right here, we can set up and implement data products. And data products are essential and are mandatory also for um, scanning data quality. So when heading over, you see how we don't have any data products yet. So let me create one. So I'm going to click this uh, and hit this button, create data product. I'm going to enter the details. So for the flight statistics, so we are going to give this a name as well, a description and a type. So for now, this is a data set, click next. And now also mandatory, I need to provide information about the use cases. So we're going to use the flight statistics, for instance, for delay management. So now we're done. So at least up till here, we have created a data product. And um, next, what I would like to do is create that relationship. So link it to the actual data. So in Fabric, where the data resides. And for that, uh, so well, Sarat already explained to you, you need to configure properly the APIs as well. You need to do the access management on a workspace and also the semantic model should be created for that lake house. But if all of these preconditions are set, we can click here. So add data sets and either I'm going to use the copilot assistant, but now for now I will find and select that data set manually. So I'm going to click and select. And the name, if I remember, was flight minus stats. So, and here you see the Power BI data set. So if I click this one, this is the semantic model. And now if I press add, you need to wait a little bit before here we see also the flight stats. So the table set now really shows up. So great, so we can start and to do data quality on this one. So we have all the preconditions set. So let's move over to the left. So under data management, here we have data quality. Um, once more, we go to flight and operations management. And importantly, as well, we need to set up a connection if that's not the case yet. So under connections, we need to set up new. This is the uh, fabric connection. I'm going to select a source type, fabric, our tenant. Should wait a little bit. here and once we are done we can click and submit yes okay so we have established a connection this is essential also for scanning data quality so go back to data quality 
our data product. Now we have, and we can see also this table and this table well, is supported so we can click on that. So here we have an overview. Um, here on the right, I can profile uh, that data. I can scan, uh, but I haven't configured anything yet. So I think we should also do that first. Uh, so here on the profile, still empty, I will profile. And once I'm back, I will also show that. And then on the rules, so we don't have any rules yet. So assume I'm a business user and I would like to add a rule on this uh, data quality set. So let, uh, let's press new rule here. And I'm going to check for empty and blank values. So click next. And I'm going to select that column. So the delay flag, um, for instance, so at the end. Don't give it any subscription, so create. And so now we have our first data quality rule and let's run and hit this button. So run data quality and scan. And this will take a while. So I'm going to pause the video and once I'm done, ready, I will come back. So we're back data quality, uh, as you can see has succeeded, but the quality, the score itself is less than I expected. I had hoped for a way better score, 75%, but there's good reason for that. So if we switch over to fabric and we would inspect the actual data set itself, we see that delay flag here, not all records are correctly filled in. So hence uh, that explains that lower data quality score. Um, what I also did, so I hit that button profile data and we nicely see the distribution, some statistics here back. We see the rules, information about the schema, but again, the score is um, lower than I expected and that I would like to increase. So for that, what we could do, if I would head back over to data quality, click on my domain, I could say here manage and I would like to set an alert. So if data quality is below a certain threshold or score, I would like someone to get notified. So let's add that alert. So I'm going to click here new. So um, alert for empty and what was the name? Oh, invalid, no spaces. So alert for empty values. Um, the threshold 80%, no less, a notification. So let's notify my dear colleague Sarat. Continue, I'm going to click and hit this data set. And now we are going to submit um, this one. Uh, what I will do next, I will head over to data quality. We need to scan once more and then uh, hopefully my colleague then will be informed about lower data quality. So I will do that once more and once I'm done, I will get back to you. Okay, we are back. Uh, did data quality and the scanning at least once more. And what we could see here nicely is now we have an action even set. So as a result of that data quality rule um, and the alert. So if I would click here, view all, well, we can see an, a new active um, action. So if we quick click once more, what we see, well, too many nulls detected. And I think this consequently come from that data quality rule we have set. And we see the column name, so the delay flag in this case. So, and here, for instance, I can assign it even to someone for the remediation. So again, uh, I will um, assign this to my colleague and assume he will immediately work on this. So I will put this in status in progress. We can hit and save this button. And now we at least know, well, we uh, have some remediation and action taken on this. And well, this was a quick uh, tour. Uh, lastly, what I would like to show if we um, would zoom out and we go to an overview of all our data products here, you nicely as well see the score. So the aggregated score of all the da different data quality rules uh, we have set. And we could even see this on a domain level. So if I would click here on this domain, we see an aggregated score of all different data products here. In this case, it's only one, but we see the aggregated data quality score as well, the health actions. So I think this nicely gives an overview of what you could expect from data quality within Perview. So we did the scanning, the cataloging, uh, we set an alert, we assigned an action. And I think this is a very good control framework to at least um, become in control of your data quality. I hope you enjoyed uh, this podcast and I'm looking forward to see you again. And at last, well, if you like, don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Uh.